after Big Baby Miller kind of signed. Uh, he wanted to do what? He wanted to, he expressed interest in fighting and AJ after the contract was signed with Big Baby Miller. So AJ was basically saying... Like, Luis Ortiz is a clown, man. It's a clown. After the fight, when he started matching me for Dave Allen and, and Malik Scott, you know what I mean? Is he still signed to... No. no. Chisora and Parker. They just signed him to keep away from Joshua. Mm. Yeah. Chisora. What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I was just listening to an interview with Dillian White, and Dillian White was speaking his opinion about Luis Ortiz, okay, and Anthony Joshua. He said Luis Ortiz is a clown. I don't know if you heard it or not, um, if it was loud enough for you, but he basically said Luis Ortiz is a clown. When they signed him to Matchroom, instead of fighting himself, he fought Dave Allen and Malik Scott, okay, and the end, you know, the the interviewer he went on to you know to go about talk about Chisora and Parker. He was like, no, they just signed Luis Ortiz to keep him away from Joshua. Now that's big. He said they signed, so they is Eddie Hearn, you know, and this has been brewing around for quite some time, you know, about that whole situation when Luis Ortiz was signed to Matchroom. And those fights never, you know, that fight never came into fruition. You know, maybe like um, Joe Joyce, maybe they felt Joshua wasn't ready for something like that. You know what I mean? Um, now, as far as Dillian White and Ortiz, I would much rather see that fight now, honestly. You know, but he did say he wanted to fight Ortiz, you know, at the O2 Arena when he fought Chisora. And little did he know if he would have fought uh, Dillian White instead of on, on uh, the Fury Wilder undercard, Luis Ortiz would have been ringside with Anthony Joshua. That's if he beat Dillian White. You know what I'm saying? So if he came to victor, he could have done exactly what he did when he, um, he beat his last opponent before he fought Wilder. Okay, Remember, he fought Wilder. He called out Wilder because Wilder was there. Wilder stepped into the ring and these guys set the fight up and boom, that fight was made. Okay. For the second time. So it could have happened and, you know, and it would have went like that. That's if he would have got past Dillian White, but that fight didn't happen. So you got to ask yourself if, is it the management of Ortiz or is it Ortiz himself or both? You know what I mean? Because it's like if Dillian White offered him to fight in his backyard, on a main event, on pay-per-view, mind you. Why didn't he take it? Or better yet, why didn't his management recommend it? You know, if anything, if, if anybody knows anything about Ortiz, Ortiz is just a fighter first. He doesn't really, he's not like a Dillian White or, you know, he's the type, he's like more like Bud Crawford. These guys, they fight. They let their promoters do that. They let their management, they leave that up to their management team. Okay. So, saying that, I believe that it is his management that held that fight back, maybe. You know what I mean? Jay Jimenez, maybe he didn't want him to fight particular fights. Maybe he didn't want him, him to fight that fight, because maybe they're waiting out for something bigger. But let's be real, the fights that he's fought after uh, Wilder weren't impressive. In fact, sure, they... He won those fights and it and it looks good for him beating those guys. But look at, you know, look at the competition. Look at the opposition of these guys. They're not on, I think it's Travis Kaufman he fought. Okay. But it's not on the level that of a Dillian White or someone that he should be fighting. Because when you fight someone like Wilder, like look at Joseph Parker, for example, Joseph Parker, sure. He lost to, He lost to Anthony Joshua, but he came right back and fought Dillian White and had a hell of a fight with Dillian White. You know, now he's being considered for a possible fury fight. That's how you do it. If you're not going to win, at least fight the guys that still keep you at a certain plateau. Luis Ortiz's management hasn't figured that shit out. So they failed him in a sense, you know, but the thing I also want to counterpunch too is 
why was the interviewer so, you know, he was like, mm, uh-huh. If it would have been me, if I was interviewing D Dillian White, and it, when I interview Dillian White, I'm going to ask him, what do you mean by that? Please elaborate. Because he didn't ask Dillian White that. Dillian White came out with that info. No, they just signed him to keep him away from Joshua. Mm, you know what I mean? He's just, mm. No, I'd have been like, oh, no. Tell me more about that. You know what I mean? Let me hear your take on that. Because that's very interesting because that has been thrown around that Luis Ortiz was that guy that that was ducked because it, but he was ducked by getting signed by the guy that the promoter didn't want him to fight. So he signed him. You know, that's not a normal practice that happens a lot in different fields, especially in my field. You know, the Screen Actors Guild, you know, if you have a talent over here at Houghton Talent and then you have another talent at Landrum talent, well, if you, and then you have a person that's looking for talent and he's a free agent, they're going to sign that person over to Landrum because they don't, from Halton, because they don't want their talent tainted with. They, you know what I mean? They're going to want that fighter, that, that fighter, they're going to want that talent to stay dormant over there. So they'll sign them and never submit them. So they never get the opportunities to perform or to do, to have an audition or any of that as compared to fighting. That's exactly what Eddie Hearn did. Think about it. He set those fights up with uh, Dave Allen and Malik Scott. You see what I'm saying? Those fights were were orchestrated that way. You know what I mean? And they were they were orchestrated for a reason. See, why Dillian White says, well, he, why didn't he fight me? Because Eddie Hearn didn't want him to fight. He wanted him to fight particular fighters in his stable, not his top fighters. He knew Dillian White is a top fighter. He knew Anthony Joshua is a top fighter. He doesn't want to risk that bringing someone new to his stable. He didn't. I don't think he signed Luis Ortiz because he wanted him to sign, put him in there with Dave Allen and fucking Malik Scott. And I think and I believe that that was Eddie Hearn's doing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, <clears throat> and it, you know, Dillian White might be thinking, well, hey, it was Ortiz's problem. But it might be the management or the promoter's problem or both, both Jay Jimenez and Eddie Hearn. Maybe they got some side stuff going. I don't know. But it just seems strange to me every time a fight comes down, you know, it's always the delay in time. Look at the look at the Ortiz uh, Joshua shit. Why was it such a long delay from him saying, hey, I want you to fight me? You know what I mean? Like, did he get the green light to all of a sudden now call out Joshua after after two weeks, after a week and a half, week and shit, a uh, week and five days or something like that? He had a long stint of time, and it was about a two-week time span where Luis, ha Luis Ortiz had to make that fight or to call out Anthony Joshua or to get his damn uh, manager, get him off his ass, and hey, they calling me out, send the offer. So, you know, I just wanted to run that by you guys. Of course, I'll leave the link below. Um, tell me what you think about this video. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been Counterpunch. Peace.